Now, with the team solution, we build a new team website branded to that specific subgroup of agents on that team. We put them onto the team, and, and anyone who's an admin at the company can also add or remove agents from the team. Mm -hmm. And the team leader and anyone else that, that, that may need to be uh, can be equipped with team level administration. So they're not admitting to the whole company, they're just giving administration uh, controls to the, the person who purchases the team and uh, thus is the admin. And additional admin credentials can be handed out to anyone that the team leader deems necessary to have them. Wow. Uh, so this creates a new level of administration and a new level of lead ownership. See, right now, agents generating leads are generating leads that are owned by them and assigned to them. And the limitations of this is that if I'm an agent and I'm trying to run a team and I want to give these leads to other people, I only have two options. One is to share, which does give that other person visibility, but does not give them assignment. The consumer is still hearing from me and not hearing from them, and responses are going to go strictly to me on all communications going out of the system. Uh -huh. The other option is to transfer the lead, um, and this fully transfers both the ownership and assignment of that lead to the other person that it's being transferred to. So I would be giving up that lead if I chose to go that route. With the new team lead ownership level, leads can be given team level ownership because they're getting either captured through the team website or any of the new um, keys that are set up for the team system. Uh, there's a Dropbox key, there's a Zillow key, there's a Zapier key. Um, so all these leads can be, all these third party services can be connected by that team site. A new robust lead routing uh, system is set up that's expressly for those leads to the team agents. And then there's also a local area smart number generated for the team. It's uh, kind of like how the brokerage has a smart number that if it were to be called, it would either route that lead to a member of the brokerage who that lead is already assigned to if they exist. If they don't, there's another set of rules that, that determines how that, uh, that lead gets handed off within the brokerage. Okay. So now there's a team Google smart number which follows like the, the group type rules but at the smaller scope of the team. Right. Someone calls it and it can rotate the team or it can go 100% to the team leader uh, or to a specific person on the team who's like, you know, whose, whose job it is to take those calls. All existing contacts when calling will go right to the person mm -hmm. they are assigned to. Okay. And then the team is also assigned a account manager of their own. Uh, a, a, you know, person on this side to advocate for them, do at administrative trainings, uh, agent trainings, uh, or for team trainings, really, and help configure the whole system. And we go through a whole onboarding process because that website will be on a domain name that will need to get uh, you know processed through MLS paperwork to get approval through whichever board's uh, data it's going to host. Okay. So that's kind of the outline of the team system. Any forgot to start sharing. I'll do that now. Here we go. All right. Okay. So um, this little menu right here pops up and you can see the team's activity, all the leads associated with the team members, and also toggle back to your own and then see strictly your activity associated with leads that are all assigned to you. Uh -huh. um, diving into the lead routing, lead routing can be customized at the company level and the team level. Agent lead routing is pretty basic since there's generally one person involved. Uh, but we'll say, uh, okay, we're going to, oops, have I gone too far? I have. I'll make rules for the team. So team lead routing rules can be based on a, a, a variety of things. They can be based on the leads source uh, hashtags. If, uh, you know, leads are coming in with hashtags and. Uh, How does that happen? Well, if you set up a squeeze page or a landing page, gotcha. those pages can automatically hashtag. A text to capture keyword can automatically hashtag. And uh, different services like Zapier mm -hmm. uh, can auto hashtag a lead on its way in from its respective source. Right. Okay. So there's a variety of ways that that, that can be done at the point of capture. Um, you can also choose whether it's a buyer, seller, renter lead, and you know base the round robining rule on property type, on area, you can stack like multiple zip codes, for example, and uh, say these, you know, this creates an area that I want to create a rule for, or, you know, if you're using multiple MLSs, which you, you may or may not be, uh, you can also make MLS-based rules, and then price point. 
So my typical example is like, let's say uh, the team is investing in Realtor.com leads. And so we want to say, if the source is Realtor.com, and uh, we'll get rid of these uh, uh, zip codes and say, if the price point that the lead's inquiring about exceeds 900000 go ahead and sign that to, you know, the head on show. Okay. Kind of doing some, some uh, cherry picking here. Now, if you have a lender involved with the team, and oftentimes teams will engage a lender to help contribute, the lender can be given a login and can then collaborate with whichever agent on the team is assigned the lead. So if Brad here is helping pay for Realtor.com leads, you could have every Realtor.com related lead assign that lead to Brad, the lender, who works in parallel with the agent. Assign it to the lender um, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and the agent at the same time. And the agent at the same time, yes. Right. They, uh, they can collaborate. So the lender will, this gives the lender visibility uh, on the whole timeline of that lead that this agent's working, just like, sure. they, just like the, the admin has, um, but only the leads assigned to that lender. So may not be all leads. Then, uh, especially if, like, say, a second lender who may be helping contribute to a, a, yet another lead source that, uh, that they should be receiving the leads for. So lenders can be added to the system infinitum. There's no limit to lenders. Uh, so let's say this rule, obviously very restrictive to just that price, you know, point. Uh, and we want to say we want a catch-all rule for Realtor.com leads that says, okay, if the lead came from Realtor.com, it's supposed to go to one of maybe, let's say, five agents. And we'll add those individuals here. And so we can do a perfectly equivalent round robin, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Or we can set weights and choose, a, you know, maybe this person should be taking a smaller percentage, as should this person. And it just does the math to add up to 100% automatically. So now it would not distribute perfectly evenly, it would follow these percentage weights. Right. And you can then add one other dimension to the round robin, which is to make a requirement that an agent is it needs to take an action in order to accept a lead assignment. So you have your choice of alert mechanisms, phone, text, and email. Each individual one has a different way of claiming the lead. The phone would be to answer and press number one. Text would be to um, click a link in the text. Or if you've got the app, you'll get a push notification. You can just hit yes on that app notification. And uh, email also has a link click right. to claim the lead. So you set a um, interval window here and then a countdown window there. So if I were to set two and six, for example, the first agent whose turn it would be to receive the next lead would be next on, you know, on deck to be alerted like, hey, Kelly, there's a lead to be claimed. You have two minutes to either click a link uh -huh. on the email, on the text, or answer the phone, press number one. And if she fails, it adds the next person in line. Maybe it's Cherise. So for the subsequent two minutes, Cherise or Kelly can claim the lead. Uh -huh. And again, if they fail, maybe that's Doug. And the final two of my six-minute example, uh, no agent claims. You'll have a default recipient on deck who will receive the lead should it pass that gauntlet. Huh. Uh, so that's that's lead distribution with or without weights, uh, round robin, I should say, with or without weights, and with or without a requirement to uh, make an acceptance move. Is the, uh, the other option is the one you referenced earlier, which is blast. Is the default uh, is the default recipient? Is that just like a, a bogus, uh, a fictitious person, or what? No, I mean no. I I would say that they should be real, uh, a real person to receive the lead because uh, everyone else failed. All the automation would kick off and the assignment would be given to them. Uh, all right. So that might be the team leader, might be an ISA. Um, however, you. I mean, theoretically, you could create a bogus login and have it be that person, but it still needs to be manned by somebody mm -hmm. and uh, and kept an eye on. Some teams will do that. It's, it's you, know, you can call it like a pond account of sorts. Um, now, the blast has the same idea. You've got a countdown time and a default recipient, but in the meantime, everybody is alerted, uh, you know, simultaneously, although simultaneously isn't always, although, you know, I can say like, the train leaves the station at the same time. Uh, not everybody gets word at the exact same time. I was talking to a, a team leader who had one agent on uh, T-Mobile, and all their texts received like 20 to 30 seconds later than the rest of the team, putting them at a disadvantage to claim last leads. Hmm. 
and that's not anything we can control for because you know we're sending the information at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's the uh, messenger who's dropping the ball in that regard. Okay. Uh, any questions on the lead routing? All right, so that's the uh, the blast. It's the Shark Tank, and it depends on your uh, on your carrier for text. As far as how quickly it delivers, yeah. I mean, email may get there faster. Uh, and, you, you but, could, you know, and you set up the same rules for that too, or is that sep or is that different if you're doing blast? It's it's unanimous. Uh, well, so, so each rule in the rule set, you're creating a whole list of rules. Each rule gets checked and then checked and then checked and then checked until a match is found, and that matching rule can be configured to do any one of those options: round robin or blast. A round robin with or without weights, with or without a, a requirement to claim or blast, mm -hmm. or just a pure round robin. So those would be like the four different mechanisms, four different uh, arc options for any given rule. All right. So round robin and blast, those are mutually exclusive. Yes, those are mutually exclusive. But round robin has two different options to either include waiting right. or include a requirement. Okay. Or or not or or include neither, and it's a perfectly equal round robin. Where the lead is simply assigned, 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 assigned. So does Blast have the requirements option? Yes, Blast, Blast, Blast necessitates the requirements. All right, they same must thing. claim the lead for the lead to be theirs. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So the next piece to this is the smart CRM. Now, the difference here really being simply that now all team leads are visible to the team admin. And agents cannot download or delete or export team-owned leads like they can their personal leads. Mm -hmm. So for admins, I tend to advise that they activate here in the column section, the agent column and the owned by column. So here you can see David Bruckner is both, owned, this lead is both owned by and assigned to David Bruckner. Now, if David were to transfer this lead to Christian here, both of these columns would change, both the ownership and the assignment. Mm -hmm. John here is assigned this lead owned at team level. If John transfers this lead to David, the assignment would change, but the ownership would not. That would remain a team owned lead feed. So for the team leader to be able to see, you know, who's the assigned agent, who is the lead owned by, and then to be able to create these filters here. I'm not sure. Have you, are you familiar with how to create these box filters? Uh, I haven't seen them yet. Okay. So the way it's done is you, you first off you create your filter. Let's just say we're gonna do something real basic like I wanna I wanna filter that shows me all of my under contract leads mm -hmm. that are let's say owned at the team level. I would click save, give it a name, and then it's gonna be here on the menu. Okay. Then this little gearbox, which is very unassuming, you click it and you can activate any filters that you feel should be out over the the, the, the the columns and rows. And so this gives you an easy way to say, I want to see my 30-day-old leads, my sphere, the team under contract, the sure. team this, that, and the other, and toggle back and forth between views that are relevant without having to muck about in the filter system over and over and over again. Okay. And you can have, I think, theoretically unlimited custom filters here. So it's good to just make them, you know, easy to understand what they're what they're alluding to and what have you. All right. Uh, listing section, not a whole lot to say on the listing section other than one extra filter that is my team listings. So a filter where the team can each pull up the team's current listings. Uh -huh. And then marketing autopilot. Now, um, have you dabbled in the smart campaigns at all? I have not adjusted any of the campaigns yet. Not adjusted. Okay, no problem. So we'll just talk about you know they are extremely flexible and adjustable, um, and at the team level, uh, so we've got 23 campaigns that are you know 23 use cases, and so I will uh, take a campaign. Let's say the buyer campaign default new lead buyer, and it's got 43 touches constituted of text, call, email, text, status updates, and I want to go ahead and. You'll possibly edit it, maybe not. Uh, depends on what you're, you know, what you want this campaign to be about. One thing that's really cool with this is that you can edit edit a, a, a call to not just be a task reminder call, but to actually have the system start to call you up to nine times 
over three days until either a voicemail is left or a conversation is had. So for an agent, what this means is that a brand new lead happens and they get a call immediately. This is outside of the call to claim the lead. This call is to actually connect them to the lead. And if they don't leave a voicemail or have a conversation, it will call them addition, this many additional times attempting to connect them to the lead. It'll be like, hi, Roberto, you have a lead to, to connect with Julie who's looking at homes uh, at around 350,000, press one. To, and so if I press one and leave a voicemail, the system will stop calling me for this, uh, for this instructed action. I see, okay. Um, but you can add a lot of other things. You can add emails, calls, uh, tailored text messages, tasks. You can add hashtags, change the lead's status, which would also change the campaign that they're on. Webhook and Zapier events are a little bit more advanced. Um, they're for working with third-party services that you want to push your lead's data out to. Mm -hmm. um, but once you've got this campaign maybe polished up a bit, you can say, okay, let's, let's scope it to the team. Now, this is going to be a campaign in their in their library. It's going to be locked. You don't want them changing the campaign because that's not their business. This is for you to be able to say, okay, agents, this is the campaign that we're applying anytime the status is a new lead and it's a buyer. Or you can even get more strategic and say anytime the source is uh, you know, realtor.com or something like that. Maybe you tailored this campaign for realtor.com leads. And you want new Realtor.com leads to receive this campaign rather than another. Bottom line is that the agents cannot change the campaign that's being deployed on team level leads. They can do whatever they want with their own leads, but team level leads, they're being kind of dictated from mm -hmm. the team level. All right. Any questions on that? No. So next major piece of the team solution is definitely the mass emails whereby um, the team leader can schedule an email to go out on the at the behest of the whole team. So I can say, like, I want to send this to my sphere and my uh, closed contacts, but we're going to send this email out to the whole to the whole team's database that falls under these, in this case, these status groups or this hashtag or uh -huh. save filter. And then, of course, can use the advanced email editor. Uh, setting up to send an email that, you know, can have embedded video, can be designed, um, you know, nice. text message, text and video. And now you said embedded stuff. videos. Is that with uh, collaboration with uh, BombBomb? Um, you can, yes, um, if, you're, if you're doing that program. Um, and, and right now I think we're giving away unlimited one-to-one -one videos. For mass videos, you'd have to buy that service, which I think is 30 a month per person. Um, you get a, a, a very limited amount included for free of one-to-one -one video sends. But if you want unlimited one-to-one -one and unlimited mass video sends by text or email, you would need the service. I think for the next 45 days or so, we're giving unlimited one-to-one -one video sends by text or email. All right, that's just a special going on, then that's going to go away. That's because we just rolled it out. It's like literally a brand new service. We want to give people the ability to see what BombBomb is all about as it's been integrated into our system. So you're using the BombBomb technology? It is BombBomb technology, yes. Uh -huh. our, our dev team and their dev team got together and uh, developed this. Basically, you can transition your BombBomb account over to Core Video, and it would be $30. Is my... So... Um, the next piece is really the lead engine, whereby um, there is a new whole set of keys established for the team. Are you kind of familiar with what I mean by when I say keys for lead integration for different lead services? Uh, no, if you could give me a, a primer, okay. a quick primer. Sure, sure. So right now every agent has their own set of keys. There's a Dropbox email. This email oh, is yeah. put into, for example, like my Realtor.com settings those leads from Realtor.com would go right into my personal agent system. Sure. The Zapier system allows you to connect different services like Facebook using Zapier. Right, Zapier right, is where right. to deliver those leads. The Zillow key, same thing for Zillow. Yeah, I've integrated BombBomb bomb into, into other systems. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So now we have a set of keys that is now the team level set of keys. Okay. So that those leads can be um, brought in as team owned 
and then assign to the agents. And of course, the office, each office has its own set of keys as well. Okay. Um, but the other pieces for marketing, like the squeeze page builder and landing page builder, um, now moving forward, the team leader is going to want to build landing and squeeze pages on the team domain name. So again, those leads come in and are team owned. Um, are you kind of familiar with landing page and squeeze page? Okay, let's take a quick look. Um, so here is a landing page, and it's not unlike the classic Craig Proctor landing page where you're giving them a value proposition mm -hmm. and trying to get their information uh, by proposition by having them put in their information into these forms. You can do different background images. You can do a custom image, a primary MLS image. You can have a video start playing. Um, there's a lot of different uh, Facebook chat. They can chat with you directly on Facebook. You're trying to offer them something. Mm -hmm. So, hey, looking for a better real estate job, let's talk about it. Ask me why Real Estate 3 is the best place to work. What have you. Um, there, I mean, you know, and there's a lot of other options, a lot of things you can do with that tool. Squeeze page is really just creating a page of content. So, um, in essence, I'm creating a page of properties that I want to direct people to. Where I want to say, okay, like, let's say I'm advertising in next door and next door is asking me for a link to advertise with. I want to create a link that not only sources those leads as next door, but maybe hashtags them as well and hashtags them as the, uh, as next door hashtags them as the name of the neighborhood I was targeting. I might have a, a this, this hashtag existing or not, but I want to fill it with people that I think might be interested in this area. And then I want to have them be shown properties in that area. And so this over here is a filter to show what properties are going to be displayed on this on this link. Um, I might say Bronxville homes that are, uh -huh. uh, you know, minimum a million dollars and have seen a reduction in price, for example. And I generate this link and this link is now designed to do oops, max price should be less than the minimum price. Okay. Price should be larger than the price. Okay, that's interesting. We'll make that. We should put a ton of zeros there then. Right. <laughs> Generate my link, copy it. And what this is going to do is generate a page of content showing precisely what I've asked. Every million dollar plus home that has seen a reduction in price since it listed. Sure. What I like to say is uh, discount, luxury to discount. So. Okay. Second, because that's the default, and it's generally the most effective. So I click on View Details here, and um, I get to see this entire listing unfettered. It's not going to try to force me to register. And then when I go on to the next, and here's that street view, which is quite nice. And then if I uh, say, okay, very cool, what's the next property? Here it's going to force me to capture. Sure. And that capture would be sourced as next door, hashtag as next door in Bronxville. And uh, I also get a short version in the lead engine is another tool whereby you can set keywords that when texted to the smart number, capture that phone number and text back a custom message. Could be including a link to say, you know, hey, luxury to such and such to receive a link to all the properties that are currently over a million dollars and reduced in price or any number of things you want to do with that marketing tool. A lot of teams will just uh, create a keyword that when texted to the smart number, text back a link to all of the team's current inventory. That way they can put that sign writer in front of any of their listings and use the same keyword over and over again. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Perfect. So, so from here, so squeeze pages are very, how would you say, specific? Uh, if you're trying to capture certain demographics or neighborhoods or price points or, or um, types of buyers. Squeeze pages are a, a page to, like, you know when they say, like, you know, I've been to people for 17 years, you need to link to your website. 
Well, now this creates a link to the website that's much more specific to the intent of whatever the marketing piece is. Are you trying to show off a single property? Are you trying to get people to put in their home address and be curious you know, to find out what their home value might be? We've got different ones for each of these and even one from Marker Report. But rather than just giving them a link to a homepage or a link to some more random, really customizing the destination and the content it's going to be displaying to them mm -hmm. and customizing how the system is going to accept them, uh, at what point is it going to force them to register, uh, are they going to be labeled in any way in the system? Labels and hashtags are effectively creating audiences. And what source do they come from? Because we want to be able to track our variety of sources. And there might be a lead routing rule that's uh, determined by what that source is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Did, I guess did that uh, kind of give better clarity? Yeah, yeah. That reinforces it. Sure. Okay. So next is really business analytics. Mm -hmm. And this is where we get into the ability to see, for example, the team's pipeline and how it breaks down across the members in each of these uh, categories where the aggregates are at the top. Source performance. Uh, this is where you know the variety of places that the team may be generating leads can be uh, put into a report. I mean, the brokerage can do this now, but at the team level, I may say, show me six months of my data, and I want to see, you know, all of my lead. You can always do 10 sources at a time, so I might choose, like, Realtor.com, update my report. I've got six months of data, so I can kind of see the ups and downs of leads coming in across my different lead sources. And then I can see, okay, how many leads came from this source in that window of time? And where are they now? What percentage have moved into the active status? What percentage have gone into client, under contract, closed, etc.? Mm -hmm. And with this information, we can then extrapolate uh, cost per lead, cost per transaction, ROI, etc. Right. Then agent performance. So one of the great things about the team system is you can set up agent accountability. And you can have agents that are on the agent accountability or off of it. You can have some that are not impacted by it. But what it would be is a set of metrics by which if an agent doesn't maintain, for example, that many um, made calls or that percentage of uh, completed tasks assigned as a moving average or they're not logging in frequently enough or they're not connecting with uh, their new leads in a timely manner or making the attempt to connect, uh -huh in a timely manner, that they will be removed out of rotation. If moved out of rotation, a team leader or admin can add them back into rotation. Otherwise, uh, they would wait till the beginning of the following month when everybody gets added back in. Okay. And it's restored to rotation. Um, so agent performance is pretty important for being able to, you know, make sure agents are, uh, you know, holding their end of the bargain and uh, if they want to keep receiving team leads. And then agent success is a, is kind of a reporting page on um, kind of best used for coaching and, and just sort of being able to diagnose where might an agent need to be improving their you know their efforts are they logging in are they importing their own contacts have they engaged leads have they created new contacts you know it's what it, how effectively are they using the system and what does our pipeline look like right now okay. so that's the the team system in a nutshell, um, you order it here in the marketplace. Um, I guess my question is, is um, are, are you the one who's making the determination of whether to, I guess, order this for the six to seven agents? Um, I'll be consulting with Jeff. Okay. And it's not that expensive. It's what, that $299? It is $399 for a team of up to 15 members. Right. And those are members of the brokerage to already be set up with the agent logins in order to be made part of this team, um, fall under the team website, team smart number, and you get assigned an account manager. And um, what we're actually doing this month, which is pretty sweet, is um, we are waiving this implementation fee. So uh, for the month of June, I have, uh, there's no setup fees. All right. And uh, it's just $3.99. It is a six month agreement right there 
Um, and we usually get you up and running in a week and a half to two weeks, just depending on the number of moving pieces. Got to go through IDX paperwork approval. There may be more than one board you're working with, and that can affect that. Okay. Can you tell me about the uh, – can non-agents be part of this team as – Yes. As, ad, um, as admins, they, you said? They, they can be. Um, with the brokerage package, you can set up unlicensed logins. Uh, the way you do that is you create a new agent, only you don't give them a subdomain at the company level. And there's a little checkbox for that when you're creating the agent. Mm -hmm. That creates a login that is effectively a login, can be assigned leads, but they can't do things like generate squeeze pages on their own because they're not um, – not licensed to show their information next to a property. Mm -hmm. But like I've got teams that will use one to be their marketing administrator and the marketing administrator can create all the, all the squeeze pages and landing pages and all those things um, at the team domain name level if they're made an admin of the team. For example, there's other, there's other uh, uh, you know, roles that necessitate or are facilitated by a login that's you know, maybe a non-agent login. Mm -hmm. And those are all, of course, different than lender logins, which are very expressly lenders and can be assigned to leads in, in, in parallel to the agents. Okay. Can that be done, Roberta? Can that be uh, – I was trying to, to find a solution uh, outside of the team structure for our brokerage to allow uh, me to have a personal assistant, and I was told – by Brian, that uh, she would have to be an agent, be assigned as an agent seat, mm -hmm. and my broker like shut that down right away. And says, "Well, no, because you know she's not licensed. We're not going to give her any access to the system." Okay, uh, is that right? I mean, and, and that well, that okay. So first off, that is your broker's prerogative to to make that determination. But no, you for individual agents. You, you can't have a separate login mm -hmm. that operates as a, an assistant. You you just have the option to give them your own credentials to log in. Right. Okay. Um, only at the team level, where now there's this higher level of administration that can be shared with another person, um, can that be accomplished? But there's right. no tech, tech, technical uh, solution for what you're asking for. Right. Okay. Oh, you, you originally spoke with Brian Hoylman? Yes. Come on board. Okay, yeah, I've known him for about the better part of 15 years now. All right. Maybe more. Yeah, we worked together at two previous companies. Wow. Okay. How long have you guys been uh, with KV or real inside real estate? Uh, this month, for me, marks two years. All right. Uh, but for me in the industry, I'm at uh, about 17 and a half. Yeah, nice. So I guess what are our next steps? All right. So I'll be sharing this with uh, with Jeff. And this concierge setup, that's a two-week um, intense thing. That's like one-on-one -on -one with you then or one of your trainers? Not with, not with myself. Um, it, it's, it's, it's several meetings with um, the, the, the account manager. And also if we need to do lead importing, um, the Dropbox setup is us helping you set up your third-party lead sources to connect, uh, helping you configure your lead routing campaigns configuration, and then also uh, we can do a meeting with the whole team and uh, admin and training with anyone who's going to be an admin on the team mm -hmm. and uh, concierge call. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we're basically just waiving the setup fee here. Um, at the at the outset, um, so three ninety nine. The billing would start five days from the point of completing this form. It's a two page form. Mm -hmm. uh, the second page has a lot more details about the actual team, asking for like domain name of the team site and uh, some other IDX related paperwork information. And um, it may take, it, of course, it, it will take longer than five days to get you up and running. But that's just the timeline that they've kind of given us a five-day uh, grace period before the billing begins. All right. Gotcha. All um, right. I, I can send you an email with like a pre-recorded webinar we've done. Actually, Brian did it, as a matter of fact. On this subject, um, yeah. 
on the on the mark on the on the team system. Okay, that'd be great. Um, yeah, and a short three minute that one that I did, and then um, when would you I guess want to hear back from me or 